get a refund on, on, on the season cards. People who don't know how to, get, how to use the internet are the old people. For me, it's it, it's another example of the owners taking the piss out of trying trying to pull a fast one over the the elderly yeah, supporters. I think as well the elderly supporters. But say, like, I mean, to me, if if I've got any advice for anybody, if um if the older they don't know how to use it, ask some a meta family member who can help them hey. do it. Do you know what I mean? Because Huh. It's and the dates there, money and 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 uh, entitled to it. You know I mean, Michael? Right. Yeah. Can I uh, okay, no. can I quickly uh, quickly jump in in there? Uh, first I'm of all, sorry. we're going to say uh, welcome to uh, the mad mistake. Better late than never. <laughs> the right way up, good man. Right. <laughs> um, I just quickly wanted to jump in uh, because obviously Michael there mentioned his travel and his holiday he had booked. Um, I think it's a. Uh, a good time that we should uh, sort of applaud his traveller. We're a Sunderland company uh, based in Sunderland. have done a absolutely superb with everybody who's booked a holiday. They've guaranteed everybody gets a full refund, cash refund, Sorry. where other where um, where other companies have uh, have tried to give the vouchers and stuff like that. And uh, I think you're only having to wait, uh, Michael, is because obviously. Uh, uh, yeah, there's loads the of people. National company have gone bust and, and things like that. So, uh, well done to his travel anyway. Sunderland Company. So, yes, well it's done. It's it's buying out Thomas Cook book. as well. I was going to yeah. ask Michael, uh, what kind, are you going on holiday to Scotland? Who was on holiday to Scotland? Like? <laughs> well, <laughs> Michael, it was, was, oh, what's wrong with Scotland? <laughs> I'm not saying oh, that. Oh, dear. Unless that's a holiday, like. Uh, right, Get on okay. the whiskey. <laughs> To answer Dino's question, I think it was because it was for Edinburgh specifically, and it was because I remember going to Edinburgh um, many years ago as a kid, and I just and I think we all agree we just wanted to go there. I fancy going there again, um, but obviously this has all since happened. Just quickly, it's not his travel; it's Tate's travel with Sunderland. But obviously, the Phil's principle of place still apply. You know, they've done tremendous stuff. They, you know, and it's easy to not offer. It's easy to have not offered refunds. I think the point I was making was that. That was obviously if it's taking that potentially up to eight weeks to get refunds done, and obviously yeah, there's going to be thousands of people, loads of people who are wanting full refunds on holidays. Um, I'm just I was trying to put a bit of context in maybe why the club's taking so long to to do re, to do these refund processes. But Terry, what's your thoughts, lad? Well, hang on, I was going to just ask you. I was just going to say you don't have to explain uh, where you're going on holiday. So Dino, you naughty naughty boy. <laughs> Right. Thanks, I'm go him for that. Uh, yeah, Terry, what we're on about, we're just on about uh, the club this week have uh, announced that they're going to offer refunds uh, on last season's tickets and stuff like that. And uh, we're saying, you know, are you happy with, uh, with what they have in place? So it's a good thing, surely, yes? But it is a good thing for the, to the people who want the refunds back. It is a good thing if it actually happens. But... It's, it's uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good thing all around. Some people will claim the, the two or three games and some people won't, so everyone individual will do different things. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's good they're finally going to give some money back, but are they? Well, what, do, you, do you not think that they will? Well, they're taking the time, aren't they? Dragging the feet. Yeah, but it takes time to set all this up, doesn't it, really? And they're just making the fans happy for the time being. Just to... Right. Well, I don't think, I think if there, there was no intention of paying the fans back, then the worst thing they could possibly do is announce that they're going to give refunds if they have it in their minds that they're not going to do that. So I'll find it hard to believe that oh. they announce that they're going to give refunds and then they don't. Does anybody actually think Donald even cares anymore? <laughs> well, I no, I said it no it is. about that. <laughs> I said it uh, last week. I says with the fans wanting him out, I think he's just doing a half horse job of everything at the start. He, his passion was there, and it's like when you it's like when you're at work and you know you're going to be sacked at the end of the month. You don't put a hundred percent in. You might you might take a couple of sick days off because you can't be bothered because you know you're getting sacked. So maybe that's what Donald's doing. He's just mm. half horse and everything. Like, do you know? Is that your uh, is that your uh, your advert for your next job? Then. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think no one will admit it. No one will admit it. Saying, oh, I'm going to put 100%, 100% in. But if you know you're getting sacked, you don't have the motivation to go into work and to work, work with the person who's going to end up sacking you. So I wouldn't, like, everyone's hounding Donald out. So why is he going to put 100% in? He's just going to half arse mm. everything and maybe take the, if there's going to be a takeover, he's just going to half arse that as well. Just make it take, just draw it out, just to piss everyone off. So that's the. 
Is it not a live stream tonight? No, unfortunately not. Um, it works on it works on Tuesday. It worked this afternoon, and then when I come to do the live stream tonight, sod's law, it didn't work again. So I do apologise. My fault. I'm inept. Um, all, all you still believe that you do what Donald see of the club. What's that? Do you all be, still believe Stuart Donald saved the football club? Saved the club? Yeah, yeah. of course he did. Yeah. Yeah? All right, go ahead and tell us why, tell, tell us why he saved the club. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right. I think um, with the situation, the club like, being relegated to the third tier, I think there was a lot of things he needed to fix. But what Dave <coughs> Lawrence said last week, he summed it up in a nutshell. Since he's been our owner, he's fought like his decision making based on like a fan's point of view rather than like being an actual owner and that's let us down completely from top to bottom. Right. For me, for me, right. Um, even though uh, the the big uh, the big thing was uh, Ellis Short wiping out the debt, right. However, had Stuart Donald and the team not cut back as they have, right then this club probably wouldn't have been, you know, we would have probably gone under. And I think the fact that, um, you know, there's Wigan uh, this week, gone into administration. I think if we were still running at the losses that, uh, that we were, then, um, you know, so I, I think that the job they've done, I mean, everybody complains about, oh, we've not spent money on this and we've bought, we've only spent this amount of money on that. And what have you? Though we're still not we're still not making a profit. You know, it was all about trying to reel it all in and and live live within your means. So, you know that that's what they were trying to do. Well, I uh, watched I watched Sun until I die again. Uh, like in one day, I watched it all. Uh, season two, especially with being the newest one. So I watched it in this in the uh, we're making a fifty million pound loss every year and so well, we're never making profit regardless and the way we were going we we're going to end up bust like you say we had cryo chambers no one used they were just like they were just saying that uh, Ellis Short oh we need money to do this okay he'd, he'd give you the money but at the end of the day it was making the club financially worse and when you've got it like you say when you've got a man who just signs off a check saying right there's the money for the bill and then you just get he got sick and we're in the mess because Ellis Short um, just you know, forgot about ago, basically. He, for, he, yeah. for, he forgot about it basically. That's two so years ago. Stuart though. Donald, mm -hmm. Stuart Donald had to come in and get the finances right down. I mean, in the championship season, I'm sure the uh, wage bill was 36 million or something. In the non-playing staff was, I don't know how many million it was, but that was even high as well. So them have had to come in and financially try and get where back on 11 playing field and we're still not making a profit these days but we're not making a 50 million uh, pound loss like we were next Jacob uh, I think was it what Dino summed up there was right I mean watch, watching Sunday Until I Die the thing that infuriated most what he touched upon there was when um, they're going through the list of unnecessary spendage and they found that um, that chamber in the training ground that Martin Bain was using just for his back pain and like no other players was using it whatsoever. <laughs> a key example of unnecessary spending going on at our football club, and it all stemmed from the top when Ellis Short was in the boardroom. And for me, he's the reason where we are now. Like it all started from him. I know Stuart Donald made it worse as time went along, but with his poor financial decisions and like the lack of ambition to back managers as well, we now find ourselves in the third tier of English football, and it's a disgrace. Michael? Well, I would say when Sean said to Dino, that's two years ago about Ellis Short, to be fair, it was you who started the conversation and asked, do you still think Stuart Donald stayed at the club? That topic is of two years ago, so it's actually quite fair in my to bring up Ellis Short. <laughs> Having said that, um, yeah, I do still believe that Donald over Shaw did save it, but there is a but here at the minute, and I think Sean will probably agree with this. He did save it for me, but I think he's now at risk of killing it if he's not careful. And he Great. needs to really, you know, and you, you, and for me, like even then, what Jacob touched on, I think it, in some respects, yeah, it is down to Ellis Short that we are in League One, but you can also point the argument and say, well, it's also down to Donald was still in League One. 
you know, it's both of them deserve just as much blame as the other. And um, I think for me that, I mean, the biggest thing, some, the biggest thing sums up for me with Donald is that the biggest thing that I have, the biggest thing I have an issue with Donald with is that the first year, I don't think, I think the first year, personally, this is just my opinion. I think the first season they were here, there was not much more they could have done. First season, there was not much more they could have done. Since then, I think both Methvin, but especially Donald, have hidden massively from the fan base. And I think that, if anything, that's one, I mean, there's a lot of things about that aggravate people about Donald and Methvin, but <clears throat> sorry, I think in Donald's case, especially, the fact he's hid away for the good part of, what, nine months now? Nine, ten months. And he hasn't bothered to come out and actually uh, really try and address people. You know, come on, come on, Donald. Where, where was that you, you were perfectly keen to do this at the start? Where's that gone to? Why are we all of a sudden not having any communication. This, as much as, you know, people do tend to forget how really rotten we were under the back end of Ellis Short's reign. I mean, like, really rotten. But at the minute, this isn't much better. This really does not feel like much better. Ultimately, you can argue, as much as I thought Martin Bain, for example, had a hard time when he was given no assurances under Short, he was, effect- you could, people have argued he was Short's puppet, fair enough. And I argue Jim Rodwell, Stuart Donald's puppet. Again, dangling from the strings, just like on the theatre stage. You know, like, it's ridiculous. And, <clears throat> Donald at the minute, the regime at the moment, it's just, they're just out of their depth, unfortunately. And as I've stuck up for them, everybody up there knows, and I know Dino has been particularly as well, but I've stuck up for these guys as long as I possibly can. And now it's like, no, enough's enough. You know, we're at the lowest point ever in our history. And, we're, and, you know, and, and the vibe we always constantly get is, oh, you know, come on, we can't expect to do this. Like, all right, Donald Methvin, mate, you both set the target of 100 points, and you, you barely just reached over half of that with three quarters of the season played. So come on, you know, but it's okay. We're handing out our last five owners. I'll just bugger off. Yeah. Right. So, so basically, Philly says Donald <laughs> said the club Dino did, uh, Michael did, Jeter did. Fucking hell. Um, Terry, um, did uh, <laughs> did Stuart Donald save the club? Right. <laughs> you are, my, John. You are. He's, he's my take on us. If Donald didn't come in, I reckon somebody else would have came in and bought the club. Somebody else would have bought the club eventually. Uh, don't and they would have that. bought it for exactly the same amount as Donald bought it for. They were getting a really good deal. Donald's come in. Any businessman with half a brain could come in and clean up that club the way Donald and Metvin did it. But they've got no cash to spend in the club. They gambled on getting promoted in the first season. I think anybody with half a brain could have done that job Donald and Metvin did. Michael, Michael, over to you. You're yeah, um, uh, I don't buy this. Um, or anybody would have brought into the club again. You had 190 odd million pounds of debt, Terry. I'm sorry, I, I don't get how the argument is anyone could have brought and come in and bought no, the club. I'm not, you, saying, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying Donald and Methvin have ultimately done a good job because they haven't. We're still in League One, but that I, I think uh, people conveniently forgotten how much money we were losing right right yeah. before they took the club. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is. Donald and Metfin aren't the best businessmen in the world. There's got to be other people oh. out there who come in and bought the club. But do, you think, that, but do you think there was that much interest? The business brain who was interested in football in the lower tiers, like Donald and Metfin, could have come in and done exactly the same job, got rid of the cryo chamber. It's not rocket science, huh? All the staff we had, all the bills we were paying, it's not rocket science. They could have, anybody could have cut all of those. But they haven't invested you? any money at all. They haven't. All they've done it's come in, put the cost. Got the, got the club the cost, for peanuts, yeah. got the well club done. for peanuts off, off Ellis, got rid of all the debt, more, more or less by getting rid of all the, 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 the top bills that start dragging them down in the first place, cut all the wages. They've done the simple things. They haven't put any money, they haven't bought any decent players for any amount of cash at all. They've all been free transfers, free transfers. Yeah. bargain basement buys. So if we if said they didn't come and buy the club, somebody else could have come and bought the club who had more of a brain, as in a football and brain and a business brain, and could have been us up in the championship straight away. But there's a few, there's a few points. Sorry, Sorry, there's a few points just to counter there. First of all, in terms of the transfers and the free signings, where well, we splashed three million on Will Grigg and that didn't work out. Secondly, you're in a league where free signings do tend to get you out of the league, whereas in, in the championship you need to spend more money factually to, to have a better chance of competing. Thirdly, the fact that when John Methvin did come in, again, I'm not saying that they're the bee's knees. <laughs> I'm not saying that they're the bee's knees. And right, done the best of them. You know, but the whole point is that um, when they came in, 
there was talk that Ellis Court was there were other parties interested, but they were they weren't willing to hemorrhage off the debt. So, uh, would we have been better off in a situation where someone else comes in, but the debt gets transferred over to them? No, of course we wouldn't have been. Now, that all depends if you believe. It all depends there if you believe Donald Meffin on that. But uh, we weren't in a. The fact is, I do not think we were in a position then where people were queuing to buy us. We there wouldn't have been. You, again, you're right. at a business that's failed constantly and losing so much money a year. I don't get how we can say, oh, there's loads of other people that would have bought the club. That, that there's nobody else there. out there who come in and got the club for the same amount of money as Donald did. So you see Donald's the best businessman around at that moment in time to come in, but then he shows his naivety by spending all that money on Will Grigg. That's how pathetic he is. Then what he did there... Jerry, can I Excuse me, can we let Dino in and then we'll come to you, Jacob, because Dino's yeah, no, been trying to get in. Dino? All I'm saying is, Will Grigg should be a good signing. All right, then. Forget that then, Michael. You just carry on. All right. Dino... You might as well just go on. Right. Who, whose decision was it to sell to Stuart Donald? Ella Short. Ella Short. So clearly there was no one else going to take on the, the job at hand apart from Donald and Meffin because if there was people who were better, do you not think Ella Short went, <laughs> well, I'm going to pick you? Clearly not. Ella Short just decided to give it to Stuart Donald and Charlie Meffin, so that makes, he, that makes uh, Ella Short even more culpable at why we're in this shit in the first place. Secondly, we did... We did Splash out money was three million on Will Greg, and everyone at the time even said that's a good signing, but it hasn't worked out. So everyone now saying we should never spend that money. But if he didn't buy him, there would have been uproar. We wouldn't have had a striker. We give we, we tried it. It didn't work. Simple as that. We bought. Did we not buy Luke O Nine for two hundred, three hundred k? Did we not buy George Dobson for half nice. a mil? Did we not buy Charlie White for nearly a million? So he did did buy money. Um, free agents. Uh, you can't say Chris McGuire is a bad, bad free agent. You can't say John McLaughlin is a bad free agent. You can't say Jordan Willis is a bad free agent. So the business has been good, but at the end of the day, you've got to perform on the pitch, and that's where everything co comes down to. And we lost by one, the final kick of a game in the playoff final, in the fact that we bottled it when we had three, four games in hand. So that's not Donald's fault. That's the players and managers' fault. So. Jacob? Um, yeah, Michael, I want to go and touch, touch upon what you said. You were saying that potentially no one else would have come in other than Stuart Donald to buy the club off Ellis Short when we got relegated to League One. What I don't understand is, obviously, I, I wish Wigan Athletic all the best at the moment with the financial situation that they're in because they've gone into administration, but they've apparently got 12 people, was it 12 groups who are queuing up who are interested to buy them already and they're in administration. So potentially at the time, I would argue what you said, Bowers, I reckon someone else potentially would have come in and like... Fair enough. The club. But then again, we were in League One and it would have been harder to attract those owners. Yet Wigan right now, they're in the championship, but it just shows it can happen to any club if like financial situations go completely the wrong way there's like consequences for that and unfortunately a club like Wigan who seven years ago they won the FA Cup seven years later they find themselves in administration yeah, well, hopefully, they, they, hopefully they get it um, Right can we before we move off that topic uh, can I, I just ask Sean is there <clears throat> anything positive or nice or good you would say about Stuart Donald anything at all <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let, 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 let me see it because everybody's had their say, right? I'll, so I'll just finish, the, finish this on a, on, a, on a thing, right? Right. Oh. First of all, he's all, well, apart from Terry, he's the only one that, for me, talks sense because he's, he's obviously agreeing with me. Because he agrees with you. Yeah. Because he agrees. Uh, right. <laughs> when Stuart Donald took over the club, right, the, 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 he agreed a price with, um, with Ellis Short, was, was 40 million, right? In, in turn, Ellis Short was wiping the debt, claiming the debt, right? He was leaving it, leaving it. Um, in, in, a, in a fit, healthy state of mind, yeah. And then there was a few overheads, uh, which were not about transfers, which done that sort of, but that's his job to sort it out. Um, Donald paid 10 million to put, like, uh, sorry, sorry, at first, he, he says, well, this is what he says, we played uh, Ellis up, we've paid 40 million. That's fucking lies. He didn't pay the 40 million straight up because he paid it in installments. He paid 10 million for the club, yeah. He paid 10 million for the club, and he paid it in instalments, yeah? And what he did was, he took the club's money to pay for the club as well. 
So that's not his money, that's the club's money. That's the football club's money. So he's paid 10 million out of his home money, and that's all he's put into the club. So you have to, see, you have to tell me that uh, Stuart Donald has saved our football club by putting 10 million into the club when a man has paid 152 million for their uh, death cling off. I, 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 now, I find that, I find that, just, I kind of get in my head. Sorry. Well, how can, how can you think that he paid 40 million for the club when the guys, he's only worth 8 million himself? You know what I mean? It's uh, so I don't know where you're getting all this. I, uh, I think I, I think Ella Short won't rid of the club that much, and I think he, to be honest, they. I know in the championship he didn't he didn't invest in that. That was always a little bit, but I think the squad was good enough. Um, I think he just had nothing, and I think maybe he's, um, what's he called? Don was the only person who, who was actually strong. No, because the, because Ellis Short chose Donald and the. And and his team because there was other people in for it, right? And he only wanted it to go to someone who who had its best interest at heart. So I think he chose them. I think there was well, I know there was other people in for it, because um, well, I just do. I know there was some. I know there was at least one other one other person in for it. And well, I, Sun, it's I, a Sunderland-based company. I don't think that. Um, I think in a short. He lost that much money. He lost about three, four hundred million. And obviously, it was you know, um, he employed bad people to run the club and this that and the other. So, you know, that was what cost him in the end. But for a man who's lost four hundred million, I do feel sorry for man. Uh, I mean, I'm as passionate as what you are. I mean, it hurt me that double relegation. <coughs> but I didn't. I never blamed on him because we had two that, that championship season. We had two managers who could have in the squad could have gotten out that mess. You know, what I mean, he just he just constantly constantly people just constantly waste the money. And um, he maybe he could have invested in the championship season, but he didn't. But I still think that score was good enough. But all I'm seeing is uh, Stuart Donald paid ten million up front for the club, and then he paid the rest of, <coughs> of the for the club to a short through the club's money. So all well, he's got the club is ten million. I tell you, didn't done. you say the club's money is his money because he runs it? So if it's the club's money, it's technically his money, isn't it? No, 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 no. Well, no, well, well, no. You know, he, he, he agreed a fee of forty million. So therefore, he should be paying the forty million through his money, not the club's money. Thing, the club's money is to run the club. To pay well, for if, the he club, the club, yeah, if he owns the club, if he owns the club, then surely it's it's uh, it, it's his money. And what I don't like is the fact that you say just because somebody doesn't agree with you, right? Then we don't talk sense because you said the only person talking sense is the mad mistake because he's agreeing with you. You know what I mean? It's it's well, you can't well, that's, yeah, that's uh, well, I'll tell you what, mate. Like if you put a if you put a poll or you put a thing a vote about this, how many people who see at the club, about ninety ninety five percent of people would see uh, Ella Short and not Stuart Dunn. That's all I want to say about that. Yeah, but you're saying that's their opinion. That's their opinion. That's their opinion. That's their opinion thing, but ninety five percent is a big opinion. Well it does it doesn't matter. Opinion. That's that's if the, if there's five percent say uh, he saved the club and 95% don't. It doesn't mean that those 5% right, haven't got an opinion. It's an opinion. And, mm. you know, that's got to be respected. Not everyone's Just because they're in a minority doesn't mean you, you say, oh, well, you're talking shite. Yeah, well, yeah. if, if you relate to another topic... Sorry, guys. If you relate if, to... If we're a, I, know, I, know we're, I know we're trying hard not to talk over each other, but I'm actually really annoyed here. Like, the whole point is that, you know, when we're going on about... People don't talk sense, they'll disagree with you. That's bollocks for a start. I think that's very disrespectful to anyone who has a different opinion. So I, I hate it when people say shit like that. But secondly, like I put up the poll recently, like just on a different topic. Do I think, do you think Charlie White is good enough to lead us forward? I think the answer is hell no. I don't think Charlie White's anywhere near good enough. But I'm not going to say anyone who disagrees doesn't talk sense. So no, sorry. Terry, you were trying to jump in there. So what Jacob says because Wigan's got an administration is about twelve people due to want yeah, to try and buy Wigan. Like that, if Ella Ooh. Short didn't sell the club, for me, Ella Short chose the best duo at that moment in time. I reckon there might have been better ones coming along a bit later, but he chose the best ones at that moment in time because he was that sick of owning the club. He just wanted to get out as soon as possible. Because yeah. of the stick he was taking off the fans, and you know, it was all justifiable. But let's say, for instance, if we did go in administration back then, two years ago, and someone else, we had 10 buyers come in, could we have been in a better position now with actually decent owners 
instead of going backwards and backwards and backwards. We could be in a worse situation end of next season than we are at this season. Or you could also argue that Bolt got into administration and started on minus 10 points and now they're in two. I think Sunderland are definitely a better club worth buying more than Bolton. I think Sunderland have a big, bigger fan base, a better, a better stadium. I think the whole... The whole, the whole, the whole thing of buying Sunderland for me is 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 a better chance of earning more money in the future than a Bolton. Oh, all right, just then. Well, well, hang well, on, sorry, just well, one last question. Go on, if then. that's the case, if that, sorry, Phil, if that's the case, Terry, then shouldn't there be people queuing at the door to buy us now? Then we well, don't know. There might be. Well, I no, think Donald. Uh, for me, Donald yeah. wants to be in charge of the club, and he'll only sell the club if he's still running the club. That's right. the way I see. Yeah, well, well let, let me let, let me be... jump in there while we're on about uh, buying the club. Then, uh, what are your views on? Uh, apparently, obviously, Mickey Gray uh, has got mm. a consortium together and um, has failed on one occasion, but it still <laughs> seems to be uh, sort of the not going away. And I know Mickey Gray sort of slates the current owners, and you know. It, that could be with good reason because, you know, I would imagine that they, they've had dealings with them and they'll have a better insight to the current owners than what we do because we, we take everything from the media because that's all we can. We're, we're not on the inside. We don't know. Uh, but it was interesting to read uh, that when Mickey Gray had put their package together and put it to the owners, it seemed that the owners then was sort of making it awkward uh, for them to buy the club as though the owners didn't want to uh, didn't want to sell it even though uh, Stuart Donald's always said from the start you know <clears throat> if someone comes along who can do a better job then I'll sell and it's all about for the good of the club uh, mm. which is what he said um, so what are your thoughts on if if Michael Gray came in with a with a consortium Dino. Well, I watched I watched the Sunderland that I die at May season two, and Stuart Donald did say we need investment, but I don't want to give a bigger stake of the club to someone else because he, he. It is true, Stuart Donald did say he wants to stay in charge, so he doesn't want to hand over a big enough stake where he's not making like influential decisions. But if Mickey Gray, I mean, does Mickey Gray have the money to come no, in? Like, will. No, Mickey Gray the doesn't. Well, it's the, it's the, the people, it's the consortium. Mickey Gray doesn't have the money. He's just fronting it. A bit with like God what Donald Quinn did with Drummerville. Well, at the minute, I'd be happy for Donald to sell up and leave and anyone to come in at the minute. Like you say, we're even debating for Mike Ashley to come in. So that's how far we're reaching at the minute for anyone to come in. I mean, if it's if it's someone who is affiliated with a club like Michael Gray, I mean, I, I think everyone would jump on board straight away. But everyone jumped on board straight away with Stuart Donald and it doesn't yeah. always work out the way you want it to. Yeah. I didn't, Dean. I didn't, I didn't jump on Yeah, you did. You are where you were saying, yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> You were best I mates with him. Yes. You was yeah. in the stand with him going, Stuart, have you fought <laughs> with us? And all that. He does, so it didn't go he doesn't want to sell the club when he's, this is his moment of fame, being a son, being a son owner, this is his biggest part in life. He's never, never going to own a club this size, ever. So he's, he's probably, in a, you know, he's clinging on for a little bit, so I can't be able to look like, but it's the wrong thing. Jacob? Well, a bit of shining light at the end of the tunnel here. Someone responded to one of my tweets on Twitter this week saying that a businessman called Mark, Mark Campbell and his consortium are apparently going to go in for another bid. So whether they've made another bid before and it was not back, but well, Mark doing Campbell, some research on him. Mark yeah. Campbell was the guy uh, who you saw in Sun Until I Die uh, to the second series. Mark mm -hmm. Campbell is the guy who we brought in and he was showing around the academy and stuff like that. Yeah. That was actually Mark Campbell um, mm. there. So whether there's any... Uh, any truth in that? I think I've got to agree. I mean, uh, we've, we've got to get some new owners in uh, because it's just um, just the fact that they've, they've lost they've lost the crowd, they've lost the uh, the fans, and nothing now uh, will turn it round. Uh, Michael. Yeah. Well, look. Amidst all of what has been said, I think we can all agree that Don time is up at the club. It's not like they can't. Just like I said, the, the one of the things that 
it has been said that's annoying. Like, you know, like, I'm sure we'll get on to Methvin's comments later. But the comment about, though, they handed out the last five owners. Well, first of all, can he name who the owners actually are? And secondly, you know, when they keep saying, oh, you know, patience isn't forthcoming in the North. Well, mm -hmm. with all due respect to them, Methvin in particular, you can't see at the end of last season, and correct me, listen on the Rook Report, Paul, they said that you've got to look at it being a 100-point season. Mm -hmm. That, to me, suggests that they expected to go up out of this league and actually get into the championship. For them to then turn around and say, oh, the fans aren't patient, bugger off. Sorry. <clears throat> you, you, can, you cannot go around and pull the wool over fans' eyes and say that we're the problem here. And if we're also going to... I mean, I don't know what you guys... I want to know what you guys think of this. Do you think that they're trying to sell the narrative that when they're trying to sell the club, they can't do it because of the fans? I'm interested to know what you think of this. Like, are the fans getting painted at in a negative light? Be, uh, as in the re, as if the re, because I've, I've I've had people come up to me and say it was the reason we can't sell the club is because of the fans. No, I think that's garbage. I think that, or if it's not, it should be garbage. Mm, that's fans, uh, you know, that's that's football fans across the border, and it doesn't yeah. matter doesn't matter where you are. Um, <coughs> you know, if a team's losing and and owners are not spending money and stuff like that, then all fans, you know, can turn can turn on a board. That's I don't think it's just the fact that it's it's Sunderland fans. Yeah. Uh, doing that, uh, mad mistake. Have you got a uh, say on it? Few points. Just quick over a few points. First point, Will Grigg. Everybody was happy when he came to the club, but what's the point of buying them and not playing to his strengths? And then on everyone watched I've season two. Manager then not until I die on season two, <laughs> and we all saw how stupid and naive Donald was in his bidding for Will Grigg. That's that one done. Second one, Mickey Gray. Donald would not sell to Mickey Gray because Mickey Gray does not want Donald at the club. Full stop. So Donald will try and find somebody else who will keep him at the club at some in some part yeah. or some form, so he can actually have his five percent or ten percent or twenty percent and still keep his stake somewhere. He's an absolute control freak. Charlie Metvin is a control freak. The yeah. both wanted to control everything from from you know streaming the the matches at the pubs and clubs. They, they even went round to the pubs to make sure nobody was streaming them. Absolute control freaks who want to make stop vlogging at the matches because they didn't want me there to share the fans' opinions about them and whatever else. They were kicking people out of the stadium because they were changing seats. Not many other football pitches or football grounds do that. These owners are absolute control freaks. The sooner they leave, the better. Fair enough. Well, well said, Terry. Well said. Fair enough. Um, can I throw in a point that... So, Terry, you know you were touching on, like, comparing us to Bolton Wanderers about owners coming in who should buy us more compared to Bolton. When it comes to football owners in the time we live in now, they don't care about how big the club is. It's about what they do when they purchase them. I mean, you look at what, was it the, the Leicester owner? God rest his soul, but <laughs> Shinjai, lads, when he came in, like the situation that Leicester were in, and then a couple of years, a few years later, to find themselves as Premier League champions, even before the Arab owners came in at Manchester City. Before they came in, Manchester Man City were, were nobodies, really. I mean, they won less league titles than what we had. So it's all about what you do when you get your foot in through the door because owning a football club for any businessman is massive now. What I mean, Jake, I think that anybody who comes and buys Sunderland can see that there's a bigger profit at the end of the day that Sunderland, if they got promoted, like Stuart Donald has, to the Championship or to the Premier League eventually, they will make more money in the long term. So I think Sunderland is a is a bigger club and obviously has more chance of making more profit than Bolton would. Just my opinion. Yeah, can I, um, can I uh, say it to, uh, to Mad Mistake then? Um, on the Will Grigg thing uh, you mentioned there, uh, when we bought Will Grigg in the last hour of the transfer window and we were desperate for a striker, uh, Maggio had gone, we needed a striker more than anybody, right? 10 o'clock, we still had nobody, and I, like everybody else, was going absolutely mental, going, that's it, you know, finish with them. And then all of a sudden, by 20 past 10, Sunderland had put an offer in, so that had been accepted for Will Grigg, right? I was jumping about, like I would imagine every other Sunderland fan was, right? Are you saying to me now, would you have preferred, right, Stuart Donald to have not overpaid for him, Right, and not got a striker in at all because I'll tell you what, the flack what he would have got by not getting a striker in, right, would have been would have been immense. So mm. would you have preferred him to have done that, not get the striker in and has not have a striker at all? 
if it meant it's... if it meant that every single fan didn't want him at the club a year ago, then yes. Because then well, you're saying... more, even more hated than he is now at this moment in time. But at the, the most... time, at the time, Will Grigg, I wasn't jumping, I wasn't jumping for joy. I wasn't over the moon. Really? But what's the point? What's the point of buying a player and never, mm. ever, ever playing to his strengths? What is the Wait, point? But hold on, that's he not missed Donald. That's not the manager. Yeah, that's the manager. Donald, no, Donald is the owner. That, he no, pulls the strings. I don't care. Don't care. <laughs> Jack Ross is involved, but not getting the best out of Will Grigg. Jack Ross had the second half of last season, and he had the first six games of this season, and Parkinson's had the same thing. You can't not put blame on the managers for not you getting can't. the best out of that's, you can't. That's their job. The order. I, I don't care. I don't care. Donald, you can't tell me. Hey, it's Stuart Dunn's fault for everything. It doesn't matter to me. Just it doesn't matter. Sean. It's all Stuart Donald or Ellis Scott as the owner. The manager has to take responsibility. Why can we never put blame on managers anymore? Why did Donald, Donald just sack Jack Ross straight away? Sack Jack Ross? If he's well, not the player, Jack Ross is playing. Jack Ross is the one who's supposed to get the best out of Will Grigg. That's so Jack Ross, not Stuart Donald. You're the owner, man. Well, you're the owner. You paid oh, four no. million for a player, and you're watching your manager piss us out. Karen, not put them in the place for you. Hey. What do you do? Hey. What do you hey, do? Hey, 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 hey. If you're doing stuff faint, you're not playing out together anymore, man. I'm not having <laughs> 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 no, honestly, Matt's mistake is he's rubbing us up the wrong way here. Oh, I understand. No. Stuart Donald, oh, hang on. That's... Stuart Donald paying for four million for Will Grigg or three million, whatever it was, was a mistake. Don't get me wrong. But for people to go around and then say it was purely Stuart Donald's fault that he hasn't scored goals since is naive and stupid, in my opinion. That is on Jack Ross <laughs> and Bill Parkinson. The fact is, Will Grigg has regularly delivered in League One, and the managers have to take as much responsibility as Donald for not getting the best out of him. Yeah. Simple as that. Here's one, right? If I, if, I, if I was working, I'm working at my place, and I'm not doing as my owner says, I'd get a warning and get sacked. So Stuart Donald's the owner. If he buys a player in and he says to Jack Ross, this is the player I bought, do the best way you can with him. And he can one, take the deal. He's not playing to Will Grigg's strengths. If I was the owner, I'd drag Jack Ross in. I'd say, what's going on? If you don't play to your strengths, you're out the door. I'll get somebody else in here. <laughs> don't play to your strengths. <laughs> but when, when, when the owner of a football club brings a manager in, he brings a manager in because the manager is good at what he does. So it's the manager's... It's the manager's um, job to get the best out of the likes of Will Grigg. Now, you and Sean can blame, blame Stuart <laughs> Donald for whatever you want, right? Everything, if you like. However, there's sometimes you've got to accept that. As Michael said, it's the manager's uh, job to get the best out of him. And I agree, you know, Will who Grigg employed, has who, not who been... Employed, Phil, Phil, Phil. Who, employed, who employed Jack Ross, Phil? What? Who employed Jack Ross? He employs Jack yeah, Ross. Donald to do a job, to do a job. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, if Stuart well, Donald was, was doing the job, forward. then that he wouldn't need to employ Jack Ross because Stuart was, Donald would do it. That, that was Donald's first biggest oh, mistake of employing Jack Ross. You know what I mean? Let's the guy was got to get him him. It was a mistake surely, sticking with him. I'll give him that. Surely Stuart Donald would go to Jack Ross and say, do you want Will Grigg? And Jack Ross would say yes or no. If, if Jack Ross says no, then Stuart Donald is complete fool. If Jack Ross Jack, says, yeah. Well, Jack Ross, Jack Ross said on Sunday Night Die, don't overpay for him because he's not worth that much. Yeah. And then, and then Stuart but Donald's thought, if it. I don't get a striker in, I'm, I'm, we're not, we're not even gonna like have us. We've only got one striker. Key question: Why is he waiting till deadline day to bro buy in a striker? Wait until that not in the window. All the teams were taking the make, asking for big prices for players. Like, I'm sure so he was trying to go for that John Markey from Doncaster. And I'm sure they valued him at six yeah. million. I'm sure they says, we want six million from. Do you know what they Stuart Donald done with McLaughlin? Five million. Just so you say, right, well, I'm not, I'm not doing that then. That, that's what teams do. They don't want to lose players in January to a promotion rival team. So if we nick their striker, that's them not going down and maybe us going up. Do you know what I mean? So, But we've got, when Will Grigg... See, I think when the season starts, I think <coughs> Will Grigg should be the main man up front, stick him up there, because all he needs is, you know, a couple of goals in there, get firing. You know, that guy has got a proven record in, in the lower leagues, and he, he can't just be shite overnight. As we've said, he's not been played to his strengths, so why don't they say, right, we've got a brilliant striker in Will Grigg, let's play to his strengths, and we could find that uh, he could actually be on fire. Sean. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I've never hated you all as much. Honestly, I hate you all. Phil, 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 do you have confidence in Phil Parkinson that he's going to play to Will Griggs' strengths? Uh, no. Then what's the point? What's the point? No, I'm saying what Stop. I would like. I would like, Stop. Stop. I'd like Will Griggs to start. Oh. I'd like the team. <laughs> In to play to his strengths, but I know but it won't happen. Sean not, has been dying to get in. Let's show him. Is it not a striker's job to make his own chances? Yeah, maybe, maybe he missed the, an Armstrong goal on his home debut against Blackpool. I've got a couple of questions here, lads. Just because the ones where I got on Twitter early, early on the week. Oh, um, I took another the, the decent <laughs> question. I want to argue again. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, before Terry's gone listen, to bed. Sean, Sean, before you do this, we've got four minutes left. So if right. you're going to do a man one one word answers, no, uh, it's going to be quick, right? This is off uh, Paul um, of Twitter at, at Matt Tweets. He's called Paul. He uh, basically sent a message saying um, to all of us, um, "Can you give us your your, your first ever Sunny FC memory, um, and why you, why you like sort of fell in love with the club? When was the first time basically you like loved the club? What 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 match was it? And uh, it was against uh, Michael. You know, first it's quick. Chelsea it's quick. Awesome. Chelsea nil, Sunderland three under Steve Bruce went to the champions, absolutely outplayed and battered them. Unfortunately, we don't live up to that potential since, but that was the game. Good choice, Jacob. Jacob. Um, when we won promotion under Roy Keane, that Burnley game, Carlos Edwards screamer, and oh, then chop for at home, opening day of the season against Spurs. Um, my mistake. Sunderland versus Oldham, 1976, and we grander. Uh, Dino, when I seen Kevin Phillips and Niall Quinn up front. 98, 99? Something like that. that like, you see, I'm a, I'm a 92 baby, so I was I was really <laughs> young, but I remember seeing Kevin Phillips and Niall Quinnan just thinking that, that that partnership was just unreal. Peter Reid as manager as well. The passion was just there. Um, Philly? Uh, September 1974, uh, Sunderland nil, Norwich nil. Uh, first ever game at Rota Park where my dad under the floodlights. Um, loads of reasons, but that was mine. Mine was um, me at 1990. Uh, well, the, it was two legs. It was against Newcastle in the playoffs, 1990. Um, I think it was Paul Hardy with Mr. Penalty in the 90th minute. Uh, and then the second leg, we played them at St. James's Park. Um, I think Gates got the first goal, and then Gabby Denny got the second one. And then the, the, the Mags decided that they weren't going to win the game. So they, they did a pitch invasion to try and get the game called off. Because that's the mentality of them through there. Uh, but they didn't. And then we went through, through to Wembley. So that was my uh, first memory. That's when I first fell in love with Sunderland. Brilliant, brilliant deal. Right, um, there was one other question, but it's a bit long. Like, fully well, just find this day. Well, quickly. tell you what, listen, if it's a bit long, uh, we'll I just know, give, it, give him a shout out and yeah, we'll, we'll do it next week. Go on then. Yeah, it's SESA, Larry. Yeah, so you just, he was just basically asking about if Donald defaults on the loan, um, will that be a good thing? Um, but I think we've all had that, we've all had that opinion on it. If, uh, I mean, if FPP come in, it'd be great, but I can't see it. But thanks for yeah. the question. Sorry, sorry, we're out of time yet. Sorry, about right. This. Uh, there you go. Well, look, uh, that just about wraps it up uh, on a Thursday. Uh, it got a little bit heated there. I like that. That was good. Um, so thanks for watching, uh, you lot. We will be back again uh, next Thursday. We'll get this straight up on the channel. Uh, so thanks to Sean, Dino, uh, Jacob, Michael, the Mad Mistake, and myself, we Philly. And we'll see you all next week. See you. Bye-bye. Woo! Ta-da. Hang on, hang on.